What are we talking about today? Well, today we are talking about the mystery of restoration. Let me say that again. Today we are talking about the mystery of restoration. And if you are in here and you are trusting God for restoration, I want you to put it on the comment section and say this. Say, Lord, restore me. On the comment section, go ahead and comment, Lord, restore me. Only if you are trusting God for restoration. And as you type it, I decree and I declare that it shall happen in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and type it. Put it on the comment section and say, Lord, restore me. It is very true that God can restore. Whenever we talk about God restoring lives, it is not a cliche, brothers and sisters. It is a reality that some of us have experienced. And it is a reality that you also can experience. There are people who are listening to me right now who have lost so much in life. And there are those who don't know that they have lost so much. Yet they have lost so much. And as I continue to minister to you and teach, you realize that indeed you have lost so much. Hence, there is a necessity for you to claim. There is a necessity for you to get back what belongs to you. And if you are writing, I want you to write this down and never forget it. The kingdom of God operates on mysteries. One of the mysteries that is available for saints, and saints must be aware of it, is the mystery of restoration. Until you understand it, you will never be able or you will never tap into the possibilities of God. So there is a mystery. What is a mystery? The word mystery is the word mysterion. Mysterion simply means hidden. There are hidden truths about restoration. Hence we say the mystery of restoration. So today we are uncovering that mystery. And we are going to make it available. And once it is available, you'll be able to fathom that which belongs to you. You'll be able to claim back, take back, recover that which belongs to you. And one thing about restoration is that restoration needs somebody who understands that from the time of John the Baptist until now the time of Apostle Mizim Zorket and Kred, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent took it by force. One of the keys of getting restoration is understanding that the devil does not understand the language of diplomacy. He understands violence. You can't sit cute like in your couch nicely and say, I'm just listening to a message, a message that has to do with restoration. No. When it comes to restoration, your spirit must, it, mu it must be as if your spirit is agitated. You must feel it's a matter of now or never. You must feel there is a portal that has been opened for you to take that which belongs to you. Restoration, you need to understand that the enemy will never roll a red carpet and say, take what belongs to you. I know you want it. The devil is a liar. Your hallelujah wherever you are, I might not be able to hear you. But as you shout your hallelujah, the Bible says, open your mouth and I will feel it. So when you open your mouth, God will fill your mouth. So wherever you are, I want you to be able to say hallelujah. I want you to be able to put your comment section, uh, your comment in the comment section. I want you to be in here. Your spirit must be in here. Because it is by revelation that God is going to catapult you today. Glory be to God. 
I want us to read the Bible in the book of Job, chapter 42, and we read verses 10. New King James Vision will do for us. New King James Vision. Yes, ma'am. And the Lord restored Job's losses mm -hmm. when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Read that again. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. The Bible tells us that God Almighty, thank you, be seated. God Almighty restored Job. So God restored what Job had lost. The Bible here is telling us that Job had lost something. But God restored him. And not only did he restore him, he gave him twice. He gave him double. Meaning if he had lost one, it came back as two. So it is not a cliche. When we say to you, the God we serve, he is a God that restores. So it is very much true that God restores. So get ready somebody because there's going to be a restoration in your life. Glory be to Jesus. There's going to be what? Restoration. Glory be to God. One thing that I want you to understand, and this is a mystery, is that Kila Barosh. Here's a mystery. Somebody say mystery. Everybody knows that we have three realms. If you catch me here, you're gone. We have the realm of God, which is called the realm of eternity. We have the realm of angels, which is called the everlasting. The everlasting realm. We have the realm of men, which is called the realm of time. We call it the earthly realm. Between the realm of angels and the realm of men, we have a thin realm that is called the celestial realm. We call it the fourth dimension, which is the realm of all spirits. Pay attention now. In the realm of all spirits, this is where spiritual warfare is taking place, or rather takes place. Every time you pray to God, pay attention now, it's a mystery that I'm about to give you. Every time you pray to God, your prayer goes to God, and God releases an answer. But your answer coming down has to pass a realm called celestial realm. And that is a realm between you and angels, not between God and angels. That's why answers are brought by angels. Or oh, God released an answer through an angel. Now, when the angel passes through that realm, there is always a spiritual warfare. Or there is always what we call spiritual warfare. Now, pay attention now. Why is it that we are in the realm of time? We are in the earthly realm and we do not fight physically but we fight spiritually in order to obtain our blessings. Here's the mystery. It's because the enemy knows that in order for him to stop you, he has to stop the angel that is coming down with your answer. Meaning he's not really fighting the angel. It's about to make sense now. He's fighting you by fighting the angel that is coming down with your answer. And he knows, and this is what people don't know. He knows that once that angel passes the celestial realm, we call it the spiritual border or the spiritual roadblock. Once the angel passes that realm, this is powerful what I'm about to say. Once the angel passes that realm, your answer even if you can lose it after the angel gives you the answer even if you can lose it your answer will never leave earth okay i'm gonna say that again i'm gonna say that again 
I'm going to say that again for those that are still coming. Every time you pray, hear me now, and your answer leaves God's hand, and the angel that is assigned to you comes down with the answer, there will be a spiritual warfare. Hence, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The impact, we feel it. But our war is not against flesh and blood, but principalities in heavenly places. Now, once your angel prevails, like Gabriel did in the days of Daniel, and the angel comes down with your answer, even if after receiving the answer, it happens you lose the answer, the answer does not go back to God. But your answer will wander in the realm of men, which is the earthly realm. This is what I'm trying to say to you, and please hear me very well in the Holy Ghost here. Everything you lose on earth does not leave earth. That's why the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. Because once it leaves God's hand, God cannot take it back. I don't know if they're getting it. I think YouTube is getting it. I'm not quite sure about this Zoom. Zoom, I have too much VIPs and I don't like it. When a thing leaves you, it does not leave earth. Hence, the enemy fights you in the spirit more. Meaning, if you know this, you will know that though I have lost it, but I can still call it back. Oh my God. That is where the mystery of restoration comes in. You see, what Job had lost, God was aware that he lost this. Are we together? But Job did not lose what he had lost because of God. Yes, God allowed it to happen. But the enemy was the one that actually caused Job to lose what he lost. And when God stepped in, we see Job, who had lost everything, being restored in Job 42 verses 10. That God even gave him double. Pay attention now. That is where the mystery is. I know somebody is like, Apostle, I hear you're talking about uh, people who have lost something. I have never lost anything. I never had anything. That is the devil telling you that. Because some of you, you did not lose or you have not lost something tangible like a material thing but some of you you have lost the most valuable thing in the realm of men and that is time you see the greatest thing the greatest asset that you can ever possess as a child of god is time when the enemy is fighting a person i'm talking about really fighting a person the enemy fights their time. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's why you hear people talk about delay. Delay is delay because the enemy is after your time. Some of you, as I minister to you, you realize that you were not delayed, you were hidden. Say with me, restoration. restoration. The kingdom of God suffered violence. And hear me. The violent took it by force. <laughs> Catalambanod. Glory be to God. Some of you, you have lost time. That's why there are people who stand and say things like, I know something is wrong somewhere. It's not that they've seen something. They know deep down in their Noah. They know by revelation. They, they know by splangna that something went wrong. Though they cannot put their finger 
on what exactly went wrong or where it went wrong. But they know something went wrong. That's why you hear somebody saying, I am not where I'm supposed to be. And when you look at them, there is really nothing to show for it. But they are convinced that this is not where they belong. It's because in the spirit, they are receiving an update. Their spirit is longing for a place where they, are, where they ought to be. But their minds and their physical body are in another location. I don't know if you are hearing. Uh, because your spirit knows what you ought to be doing. Your spirit is older than the flesh. When God ordained you, chose you, anointed you, set, uh, set you apart and set you aside, he did it in the spirit. So your spirit knows your reality that your mind does not know. Hence, when your mind misses that reality, your spirit starts crying for that reality. Then you feel something is wrong. You go, I know I am born for greatness, but something is not adding up. Hence, you then start hearing people saying, somebody is either bewitching me or somebody is either cursing me because they know they are not moving the way they ought to be moving. It is not entitlement. It is a yearning. It is a feeling. It is something that comes from within. Are you with me? And listen, your spirit will never mislead you. Ah, uh -uh. Your spirit will never mislead you. I didn't say your mind. I'm saying your spirit will never mislead you. Once your spirit starts telling you something is not right, something is not right, brothers and sisters. And most of you right now who are saying, but I never lost any physical thing. Hear me very well. Some of you have lost the most valuable thing, and that is time. The enemy does not really care about what you possess. As long as he can get hold of your time, he controls your destiny. That's why it is very difficult for other people to fulfill destiny. Why? Because the enemy has taken hold of their time. I want you on the comment section to say, is restoration time? On the comment section, go ahead and put it on and say, is restoration time? Mm, I'm waiting for somebody to put it on the comment section and say it is restoration time. Palia Karosh. I pray wherever you are, you will receive restoration. You will never rise from the shackles of life and destiny until you realize that the enemy is after your time. And once you feel your time has been taken away, claim it back. Because it does not leave the realm of men. It does not leave earth. So anything that passes the celestial realm and comes to the realm of men cannot go back. Hence the enemy is more aggressive there. He fights you in the spirit so that you don't get it here. As long as you don't get it here, he does not have a problem. Because you'll be everywhere but nowhere. You will do whatever, but you will never yield results. Why? Because that which is supposed to unlock your destiny is held in the spirit. But once it's released now, he knows he has lost power. Then he attacks your character. Because your character is the only thing that can cause you to betray you. Are you with me? Somebody say time. One more time, say time. For the last time, say time. time. Let me break it down. The Bible declares in the book of Ecclesiastes, and I believe it's chapter 9, verses 11. The Bible then declares, can you quickly read it? Let's hear what the Bible says. Let's hear what the Bible is saying. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 11. Correct. I returned... And so under the sun, uh -huh. that the race is not to the swift. So the race, pay attention now, is not to the fastest. Pay attention. Meaning, Usain Bolt is disqualified here. Okay. The race is not to the swift. It's not to the fastest. 
it disqualifies Usain Bolt, the fastest man. Let's go. Not the battle to the strong. Not the battle to the strong. Mark Tyson is disqualified. Neither yet bread to the wise. Aha, uh -huh. Mark Zigebeck is disqualified. Nor yet riches to men of understanding. Here, Elon Musk is disqualified. Nor yet favor to men of skill. Uh -huh. But time and chance. But time and chance, that's what? Happeneth to them all. Happeneth to them all. Oh, <laughs> time and chance. Meaning everyone in the realm of men has been given time. And in that time, there is everything concerning them. That's why there is what we call the other time. Another time and your time. Oh, Lord, hear me here. It is in your time that the real you is meant to manifest. You cannot manifest that which God has put in you unless it is your time. I'll give an example so you guys understand. Example that I always give. Usain Bolt went and he, he did what he did. Became the fastest man. Everybody feared him. Men retired. And as he retired, his sponsors years later came after him and said, we need you to go and do one more last race. Of course, there was money now, a lot of it, better than before. And he went back. What he did not understand was he ran while well, it was his time. But this time is somebody's time. It was not how fast he was. It was because it was his time. Hence, when you got there, the same guy. Are we together? Same legs. Same mindset. But did not even make it to the finishing line. Why? Because he ran outside his time. Uh, somebody say time. Somebody say time. McTyson fought and he retired. And as he retired, they said to him, fight Holyfield one more time. And he came back. He ended up biting a man's ear. What happened to the iron mic? What happened? Time. Somebody say time. Time, time can fight for you. That's why it is dangerous when time fights against you. It is dangerous when time has been taken away from you. You can, be, you can try whatever. If you have lost your time, nothing will ever make sense. So whenever we talk about the mystery of restoration, we are talking about something that is beyond just you recovering small, small things. Let me reveal this to you and never forget it in the Holy Ghost. Are we together? Should I reveal it? Should I reveal this one? It is time that qualifies manifestation. <laughs> Manifestations don't happen because one desires or they want to happen. Time qualifies manifestations. Somebody say, what are you saying, Apostle? Are you saying? The book of Galatians 4, 4 declares, when the fullness of time had come, the Son of God was made manifest. Amen. The Son of God was always there. But time had to call him to manifest. Ah, they missed it. So even Jesus had to manifest because of time. In John chapter 2, Jesus is in a wedding. His mother is there. His disciples are in there. They come to him and they say, Master, that's Mary. They are out of wine. You know what Jesus said in verse 4? I believe it should be verse 4. He says, my time has not come. Wait a minute. This is Jesus we are talking about. This is the Lord of history. This is the architect of the universe. This is the creator of all. This one here we're talking about sits alone in the solitude of himself. But he looks at Mary and he says, my time. Meaning, I don't have a problem with what you asked. Time. Why? Because it is time that qualifies manifestations. 
That's why the enemy, once he takes your time, you can go for deliverance sessions, nothing will ever materialize. Because the problem you have is not being possessed or being oppressed by demons like you're thinking. The enemy has taken your time. That's why today we are talking about the mystery of restoration. I, uh, I wish somebody could say, Apostle, talk to me. I wish somebody would say, Apostle, talk to me. Palavaria Satakire. Milakura Haves Kenia Kabai. Some of you, it is not what you think you need that you need. Some of you are saying, God, if you can restore this in my life. Yet the problem is not that. The problem is time. And this is what believers don't know and it hurts me. Are we together? Once you know in your spirit and in your mind that time qualifies manifestations, you are gone. I'm telling you now by revelation, you are gone. That's why it is in the mystery of time. What killed Jesus on the cross was not the nails, was time. I'll show it to you now quickly. The Bible declares that one time they wanted to stone him and they wanted to push him off the cliff and he vanished. I mean, if Jesus was here to die for the sins of men, he was here to, be, to die for people. That was the right moment for him to die. Why did he disappear? Why did he vanish? It was not yet time. And when the time had come, he told Judas, whatever you do, do it quickly. And Judas went. And Jesus knew where they were coming. And he told his disciples. Why? Because it was time. Even in his prayer, he said, if it is possible, take away the cup. Why? He knew it was what? Time. Somebody is saying, um, I hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? W wave your hand if you can hear me. There we go. Wave your hand if you can hear me in the Holy Ghost. There are people who were involved in serious accidents. They came out without a scratch. Why? Because time negotiated for them. Time stepped in and said, this one cannot die until or unless they build or before they build their mother house. This one cannot die because their, their generation will use their name as leverage. This one cannot die because they have not interceded for their generation. Somebody say time. Come on, somebody say time. I think I need to do a teaching on time and seasons. Because here we are talking about the mystery of restoration. I want you to understand that once God restores your time, it does not matter what you do and how you do it. It will look as if you are an expert, yet you are not an expert. It's time negotiating for you. It becomes easy because of time. All of a sudden, all companies are looking for you. Yet for the past three years you have been applying, no one was responding. It's because when it's your time, all of a sudden clients show up and you wonder, where were these people three years ago? It was not yet your time. Let me show you in the scripture. Say, God restore my time. In the book of Jewel, let's go there. One more last scripture of the day. The book of Jewel. I'm getting ready to close. Facebook, YouTube, I want to see fire emojis if you are in here. Just go ahead on your comment section, put fire emojis. Fire is the nature of God. Amen. Hebrews 12, 29 says, our God is a consuming fire. And I know that after this service, most of you, as a matter of fact, many of you, God will lift you up. You shall become what I love to call a testimony of God's glory. That is so. Jesus' face will shine upon you. That is so. 
that men will look at you and say, surely the hand of God rests upon this woman. Surely the hand of God rests upon that man. And Jesus will be glorified through your life. It is very difficult for Jesus to be glorified through your life when you are just enduring life. God did not save you to enjoy life. You see, the Bible says, let them that are what tired, those who are what tired, come to me. I will do what? Give them rest. Some of you, you were not tired, you were not tired, but after you got born again, you got tired. Ah, you don't hear what I'm saying. And you're not hearing what I'm saying. Being born again, God gives you rest. We see the mystery of being born again, right? In the Old Testament, yet, of course, at that time, they were not born again. When God said, I will take them from one land to another land, a land full of milk and honey, a land full of what? Milk and honey. He says, I will take them here and I'll put them here. Canaan was symbolic to rest. He says, they shall enter my rest. Are you with me? We are called for rest. Look at our Jewish brothers and sisters. We have a lot of people who are part of our ministry who are Jewish. Look at them. 99% of them, they've entered rest. They know something we don't know. Because it is only what you know that will work for you. Say with me, restoration. restoration. I'm seeing fire emojis. The devil is in trouble. Read for us, please. The book of Joel, chapter 2. Verse 25. Yes. And I will restore to you the years that the locust had eaten, the canker worm. Okay. Now, read verse 24 and we go down nicely with it. Joel chapter 2, verse 24. Verse 23 says what? Verse 23. Mm -hmm. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, uh -huh. and rejoice in the Lord your God. Rejoice in the Lord your God. Verse 24. And the floors shall be full of wheat. Uh -huh. And the fats shall overflow uh -huh. with wine and oil. With wine and oil. Verse 25. That's our main verse. Uh -huh. And I will restore to you. And I will restore unto you. The years that the locust had eaten. The years that the locust had eaten. The canker worm. The canker worm and, and the, the caterpillar. caterpillar. And the palm worm, right? Palm worm. Amen. My great army which I send among you. Wait a minute. Pay attention to something there. Scripture says, I will restore unto you the years that the locust have eaten. Wait a minute. Since when do locusts eat years? Since when do cankerworm eat years? The Bible there is not talking about years. It's talking about time. Because it is then time that makes up the years. So when God says, I will restore unto you the years, God is saying, I will restore unto you time. They are those that don't have uh, what they are supposed to have. Not because they don't work hard. Locusts have ate their time. That's why when people begin to bewitch people, they are after their time. God in his word will not have said, I will restore you the years. If it was not important for him to restore you the years. Let me show you, because sometimes we love to read the pretext and we don't focus on the context of the text. The Bible here in verse 25 talks about restoration of years. Verse 26 says what? When the restoration has happened. Uh -huh. And ye shall eat in plenty. Ye shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied. Ye shall be satisfied. And, and praise, praise the, the name, name of, of the Lord, Lord your God. God uh -huh. That hath dealt wondrously with you. Uh -huh. And my people shall never be ashamed. My people shall never be ashamed. But who are these people? These are people that God has restored their time. They are not ashamed because they are in their time. When you are in your time, embarrassment, shame will play far from you. Uh, verse 27. Verse 27. Uh -huh. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am in the midst of Israel. And ye shall know how? When I've restored your time. Uh -huh. And that I am the Lord your God mm -hmm. and none else. Uh -huh. And my people shall never be ashamed. He's repeating it again. 
Verse 28, which you love. Let's hear where it actually comes from. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh uh -huh. and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Meaning we should never rush to prophesy. Because the Bible in verse 28 says, it shall come to pass afterward. Meaning something has to happen first in order for this to be unlocked. Oh, you are not hearing. Uh, you are not hearing what I'm saying. Some of you, you are not prophesying because you are not in your time. <laughs> after what? After God has restored the time, the years, say, God restore me. One more time, say, God restore my time. The Bible says, and it shall come to pass afterwards. But after what? We already read. After God had restored the years. After you have ate plenty. After you have been satisfied. After you have praised the name of the Lord. Who has dealt with you wondrously. The Bible says, afterwards, you shall prophesy. <laughs> oh, my God. I pray for you by the Spirit of God. I pray for you by the Spirit of God that God will restore your time. Some people will say, but that was my deal. I knew that was my deal. I knew it. Apostle, I felt it, but I don't know what went wrong. Time. Some people will sign all paperwork. Sign the documents. And right when they're about to cross to the other side, something goes wrong. The investor disappears. Or investors disappear. The person who was willing to help you is no longer there. Why? Because the enemy hijacked your time. Yes, you had no breakthrough as yet. It was about to happen. But he hijacked your time. And the same person who was supposed to cut up you, who was supposed to help you, now is helping somebody else. What happened? You lost your time. There was a canker wave that ate your time. Hear me. Hear me with the ears of the spirit. Don't hear me with the ears of the flesh. Hear me. Let God awaken your ear. Say with me time. Say, Lord, Restore me. Lord, restore my time. In the name of Jesus. Lord, restore my time. And some of you, not only did you uh, 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 lose or not only did you uh, uh, miss your time, but I want you to understand that some of you, you lost tangible things. One time you had this, the next thing you don't have. I prophesy and I speak restoration. That is so. Because I know by the spirit of grace that that which you lost has not left the realm of earth, the realm of men. It has not left the earthly realm. And we call it back to you in the name of Jesus. The mystery the reason why a lot of people will not recover is because of one thing. The mystery of recovery is in discovery. Say it with me. Say the mystery of recovery, the mystery of recovery is, in is in discovery. You need to be thoughtful to receive restoration. Let me say that again. You need to be thoughtful to receive restoration. When you read the Bible, and I believe it's in the book of Luke chapter 15 here, the Bible tells us about a young man who had left his father. Well, we know him as the prodigal son. The Bible says after years, he spent whatever he had. He spent everything that he had. He ended up eating with pigs, swine. The Bible says, and he came to himself. And he came to his senses. These are different translations. But I will take King James. He came to himself. 
He began to examine himself. He knew, I, I, I deserve better. Oh. The mystery of recovery is in discovery. You need to be able to examine your own life. And say, but according to God's calendar, which is God's time, according to God's plan concerning my life, this is where I'm supposed to be. And it is never wrong for you to feel, to feel that way. The reason why you are feeling that way is because your spirit is trying to introduce you to a reality that your mind is not yet exposed to. There is a reality that is not yet born to time. That your spirit want to introduce your mind to. Though the reality is unborn to time yet, the reality is there. And your spirit is pulling your mind towards that reality. Hallelujah. That's why you should never allow anybody telling you, you are just feeling things that are not there. Or you are just anxious. It's not you being anxious. It's your spirit pulling you towards a certain direction. Hallelujah. One time I was talking to this other woman. By God's grace, I talked to a lot of people. So I was talking to this other woman. She was like apostle. I was a CEO. I was a, I was a CEO of this company. I started as an acting CEO. Then they took me to the position and I became the CEO for this number of years. Apostle, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, Somebody just came. They removed me. They took me to a very, very low position. And while I was in there, believe it or not, they took me to where even people who are coming in to work for the company for the first time, they don't take them there. From a CEO to that. She said, Apostle, I started being depressed. I left my job. And as I left my job, six months later, I started looking for a job. Apostle, I lost cars. I lost my house. I lost myself. The only thing I have now is God. And she asked me, she said, is it the will of God? Because if it's the will of God, I will accept it. I looked at her. I said, this is not the will of your father. She said, talk to me, man of God. I said, you need to build an altar of restoration. Pala via satai. I said, you need to build an altar of restoration and watch the Lord. The Bible says, we were like them that dreamt. Are we together? The Lord can turn the captivity of Zion. In about three months, actually not three, two months later, that woman was coming back with a testimony. Saying, man of God, I'm now, as I'm talking to you, a CEO of this company that deals with roads and all of these things. And not only that, man of God, they gave me a house oh, yeah. because it was like four hours away from where I was. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not hearing me, church. No, you're not hearing me. The Bible says in the book of Job, chapter 42, verses 10, and the Lord God restored Job. So God restored Job. What he lost, he was restored. And the Bible says double. That's what your God is capable of. Yeah. Your God can orchestrate things. Listen, listen, listen. Never conceptualize God. Yeah. What limits you does not limit God. Yeah. I know some of you are singing a song of, but I'm out of season. Who holds seasons? Who holds all seasons in his hand? God. You can be out of your season, but an out of season doesn't mean God is also out of the season. Right now, some of you, you can wake up into a reality that you always prayed for. God can release one person. You need to believe God for the extraordinary children of God. That's what makes you special as a believer. Solomon, the wisest man, you remember him, went to sleep. He woke up, he was the wisest man. What are you talking about? He went to sleep. He was not the wisest man. The Bible says in the book of First Kings chapter 3, verse 15, and the Lord said in a dream, what can I do for you? Ask anything. He said, Wise, wisdom, so that I may be able to lead your people. God said, because you have asked for a right thing, 
not for your enemies to die. I will give you riches. When the man woke up, he stretched his hands like this. He was the richest man. He was the wisest man. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? God can do it like this. He needs no permission to do it. You need to believe it. You need to see it happening in your life. You need to be aggressive. Some of you right now, there is a witch of indoor somewhere sitting on your destiny. I believe some of your, my sons and daughters, members, partners, and followers of New Life are watching here. I prophesy to a lady. She also has your same name as you. I said, somebody's sitting on your destiny. And I'm going to call your name how many times? Three times. And as I call your name three times, I'm going to unseat the person sitting on your destiny. It was a prophetic moment. And I called the name three times. The third time she fell under the power of God. And people did not understand. When she fell, that person who was sitting actually was unset by three angels. And the following Sunday, she came with a testimony. That she has been trying to look for a job. But now, after that, watch this now. They called her. They said, you need no interview. Just start working. What, what is she? She's a head of what, what, right? In the whole run back thingy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, imagine she came in and she became a leader. What happened there? Listen, it was always been there. But somebody had taken a time. But when we prayed prophetically, her time was released. Some people, it's not that they cannot get married or they are bad people. They are, the enemy is fighting their time. There is no marital settlement. Are we? Are we, are we? Yes. Not because God is not releasing men. Yes. Somebody has fought your time. Yes. <laughs> ah, say, Lord restore, me. Lord, restore me. You need to be aggressive. Open your mouth in the Holy Ghost and begin to ask God and say, I speak restoration. Begin to ask God, God, restore my life. Restore my time. Restore my season. Restore my life. Begin to pray wherever you are. Lift up your voice in the Holy Ghost. We are about to conclude. We are about to close. But I feel in the spirit, this is the right moment. A portal has been opened. A portal has been created for you to fathom that which is beyond the curtain of time. And bring it into the realm of man. And that is uh, what God has destined for you. Begin to pray wherever you are. Begin to pray for restoration. Just lift up your voice. Don't sit comfortably. You rather exit the broadcast. Don't sit comfortably. You rather exit the broadcast. But if you are under the influence of my voice, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Pray that your time is being restored. If you have lost the house, pray for restoration. If your salvation is not what it used to be, the Bible declares in the book of Psalm, I believe uh, this should be uh, Psalm 51 uh, verse 12. It declares that God will restore the joy of your salvation. Wherever you are, begin to pray that God is restoring the joy of your salvation. In the book of Revelation, and you read chapter 2, the Bible speaks about you going back you being restored back to the first love. I want you to begin to pray. If you feel your salvation is not what it used to be. If you feel your faith is not what it used to be. Begin to pray wherever you are. For restoration. Restoration of joy in your life. Restoration of peace. Some of you, you don't know what peace is anymore. Some of you, you don't know what peace looks like anymore. Some of you, you don't know what rest looks like anymore. Some of you, you don't even know what happiness looks like anymore. Because the enemy came after your happiness. Because according to John 10.10, 10, his job description is to kill, to destroy. And hear me very well in the Holy Ghost. He does not just kill. He does not just destroy. That, that, that is his nature. The Bible says he comes to kill. He comes to destroy. But not only these two, he steals. So if he has stole your joy, may your joy be restored wherever you are. If he has stole your, uh, uh, your financial uh, breakthrough, may it happen to you. If he has stole uh, your purpose, uh, in the name of Jesus, I declare your vision. 
towards life. I pray for you wherever you are. That may you be restored in the name of Jesus. May you be restored in the name of Jesus. May you come back with a testimony. May you come back with a testimony. To the glory of Jesus. It shall happen in your life. Wherever you are. Begin to declare and decree. Malako shala mahandi. Likrosa takabahandele ekrevedia kabaya. Melehendre vehika barosha takavia taha. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear me very well in the Holy Ghost. Thus saith the Lord. We have entered 51 days of restoration. Oh, before the end of this year, you shall have something to shout about. Oh, you, you, you better believe it. I don't remember speaking and it didn't materialize. You on your side, you just need to believe it. You just need to receive it. You just need to cut a lamb within 51 days. You don't have to wait for 51 days. Me, oh. Within. Within. I speak to that, to, to that person. I speak to that woman. I speak to you. Listen, if you are the one that I'm here for, I speak to you. Let there be results in your life. I said, let there be results in your life. May you begin to yield results in the name of Jesus. The Bible speaks about God restoring your health. If there is somebody sick in your house right now, God is restoring their health. If you are sick right now, God is restoring your health in the name of Jesus. If you are in debt right now, there is supernatural debt cancellation. God has done it before. He has done it before. He shall do it for you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Praise Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise your God is not a dead God. I call your marriage. I call your husband. I call your wife. I call your promotion. I call your property. Listen, I call your career. I call your gift to manifest. Those that have spoken against you. Those that have exited your life. Thinking that you will never become. They shall live to see God lift you up like a horn of a unicorn. Hallelujah. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. That as we give, as we offer today in this service. Let our offering develop a voice. Let our giving have a voice. In the name of Jesus, just as uh, Cornelius' giving uh, became a memorial before you, God, Abel's offering uh, bared and bore witness, I declare and I decree that even ours today, Father, in the name of Jesus, this giving shall develop a voice. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And let there be restoration, O oh God. Let there be financial restoration. May it not just be giving. I declare and I decree that good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men shall come and minister to us. Men shall come and give unto us. Men shall give unto our bosom. In the name that is above every name. We break the shackles of poverty. We dismantle the spirit of poverty. The spirit of lack in the name of Jesus. We declare there shall be nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Today ends it in the name of Jesus. And today starts a new thing. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. All I hear is restoration. Before you give, shout restoration seven times. Restoration. Seven is a number of God. It's a number of God. It's a prophetic number. Number of completion. Hallelujah.